Northwest Trains and um, this is part three of the micro layout build and um, to start with we're going to focus on the point motors so I'm basically going to be using uh, this Pico point motor as well as uh, this easy wire setup with the switch so hopefully no soldering at all involved um, if you watched the last update you know that the final parts of the video I basically use this little uh, pin vise drill to the center of the point and that basically marked out my drill hole so I've done that so now basically what I've got to do is uh, dismantle the track and um, drill a bigger hole for, to allow for the point motor to swing left and right and then um, I can put the track back together pin it down properly and uh, hopefully fit the point motors so I'm going to get cracking now and let's uh, see how it goes right I've uh, done the holes for the point motors and I've put the three points back roughly to where they're going so um, I don't want to pin it off and down permanently just in case it doesn't line up perfectly with the holes or the point motors so all I'm going to do for now is use these track fixing screws that I picked up off eBay and they're about six millimeters long and um if you follow the budget model railways channel they use them on their track so um i thought it'd be quite easy to, to to remove again if i didn't want to leave them in but the main thing just to try and keep the track um straight and in place while i'm fitting the point motors from underneath so um i'm going to put these track pins in now next time you see the layout it'll be on its side ready for the uh, point motor fitting I've got the board now on its sides, so um, to show you what I've done so far, I've attached these first two point motors, um, and I've also actually wired this one up, tested it, and it works for the time being. Also, you can see the good thing about these um, baseboards is you've got the, uh, the little holes cut out ready for you to thread the wires through and tie them up. I'm going to cable tie all these together once... Uh, once it's all finished and sorted and I checked everything's working so um, I'm going to move over to the other side of the layout now for the final point motor we're going to fit that and um, hopefully wire it up and get it working All right, so this is the final point motor hole here and this is our Pico point motor with the long pin so um, normally these bits here would go into the point but now, because um, we're using one of these housings, this literally has to clip in the place here. It's a little bit awkward. Just got to line each pin up, like so there. And then what I do then is, to stop it from falling out, is just bend. Oh, hang on, I've done that wrong, actually. I've got to put the pin in, so the pin's got to go in. You have to focus on trying to line it up and get it back together. You end up forgetting the most important bit. Right, that's back in place now. So what I do then is just bend the metal, just so the point can't fall out. So my fingers are in the way. I'm trying not to stab myself with the screwdriver while I'm doing it. So, like that. And so our point motor is ready. So all I've got to do is line it up at the centre hole of the point. You can just about see there. This one's actually quite tight to the end of the baseboard, but I should get away with it. So that's actually slotted into the point there. So I'll try and follow the angle of the point slightly when I screw it in as well. 
And to do that, you do get screws with the plates, but I seem to have lost them, so I've got myself some little tiny screws. You do about 8mm, something like that, just to screw them in place with. And um, you can always unscrew them if it doesn't quite work out right or anything. It's not too bad. So it's a bit fiddly, but yeah, like I say, I'm roughly following the angle of the points. Otherwise, I don't think it'll work. Alright, our point motor is screwed in now, so we move on to the switch. So this is what we get, basically. So the uh, red and black wire goes to the point motor. The blue wire goes to the power source. So um, the accessory um, switch, basically, on your control box, if you've got one. I'm just using my old Gage Master controller for this. So we take the uh, nut and washer off. And we just turn around now to, uh, in fact, I'll move the camera over. Okay, now, so we thread our switch through the hole that I've pre drilled. Stick the washer on. And the nuts. And that holds it in place. Okay. So, um, left with our three wires now. I'm just going to go back to the point motor. Right, I'm trying to get an overall view now, so... I can, I can make sense of it for you. So, obviously they're a bit long now, but we have our red and black wire coming through. And that basically clips into the point motor. Get it in. You know, I've not struggled to get a single one of these in. As soon as I get on camera to put one on, <laughs> it becomes awkward. In fact, I think I'm doing it the way around. On so there we go. That's it. So that's slid on now. And then the black one goes next to it. Like so. So again, we're going to tidy them up later. The blue wire, basically... Comes straight back out of this hole, so that's going to the control box. What I might have to do is widen the hole a little bit for all these wires, or put a junction box in for them all to go into. So that's that there. Um, so the other side of the point motor, we have the green wire. Again, clips in exactly the same way. See if I can do it with my chubby fingers. Try and do the awkward one first. I think that's in. And our second one. So this is like a loop. So it's basically powering the whole side. There we go, just about. So, and then again, the green wire goes outside to the power source. So, blue and green is basically your power. And the red and black goes to the point motors. So, that's that one. Um, gonna set the layout up right now. We'll try to. So you can see now the uh, rod out the point sticking up. So we're going back over to our control box area now. Okay, so we're at the power end. We've got our switch in place down here. And these two wires that have come out of the board here. Now basically what you could do is you get an extension wire with the packs. So they literally 
just clip in this so is it more handy for larger layouts like the one in the loft um i just put them in for example you can cut them off otherwise if you wanted to but um for now we're going to leave them in because they're going to come in handy for the uh connecting it to the control box they're just going to connect the blue one up now there we go so if I find my little flathead screwdriver so basically loosen this off again like I say I think I'll probably put all the wires into a junction box so we haven't got three going into the one accessory box it might get a little bit crowded but it's just purely for the video just to show how these things work and these um, expo tool wires I mean they're a great little uh, idea really because like I say I used to use I mean there's the Pico I think it was called the probe I used to use I used to have little metal studs it's on one of my earlier loft layout videos I didn't really like them much because they seemed to rust and corrode pretty quickly right so that's that one right I've got the uh, the board turned back over I've uh, done the first two check them this second one here is a bit of a pain um, so if you're doing these when you screw the plates from underneath they have got to line up perfectly with the point because um, sometimes it doesn't quite work right it doesn't work at all so um, I've got these two work and this one again was a bit of a problem the one we've just done but um, I'm hoping it'll be alright now so I'm just going to test it now with a switch down the side of the layout it seems to be working alright they are quite noisy aren't they these point motors but they'll do for this purpose um, so what I've got to do now before I run any trains is uh, I've got to cut this off here obviously to stop the train from hitting it or catching it underneath and now what I've been using is uh, my old track cutters so they are a bit blunted anyway um, I think it would be better with a little a metal cutter on a Dremel or a little multi cutter um, I haven't got one that small that I think will be able to do it without hitting the point so all I did use was this um, probably not really recommended I and mean, you got to wear safety glasses because this can shoot off at you but just give an example so you can see that shot off then like a bullet so you have got to be careful um, just test it again now and it still works, thankfully. So we're going to see some trains running now. And right, just before um, we run some trains, Tessa, I just wanted to show what else I've been doing on the layout. So far, I've uh, made this. It's um, just what I've knocked up out of uh, bits of plastic for the engine shed. That's going to sit here. So where the back seat is, I'm just going to probably create a brick wall effect there somewhere. So um, I'm waiting for some brick effect paper to go with that. I haven't quite decided yet what to do with the shed um, building wise but I've got these windows and doors. I've also got some um, 3D printed windows and doors as well which I might use. But I'm not sure yet whether to do a brick effect or whether to use these. So this is like yet metal cladding that you see on modern engine sheds or even on sheds on heritage lines that have been uh, built not original sheds so I haven't quite decided yet I did want to keep it as like a bit of an old engine shed sort of theme so we'll see I've also got this little ground level signal box kit to build so hopefully that will fit on the way out somewhere and um, these are only like £1.50 so I've got a little uh, uncoupler to put in the siding so I might try that out if we're swapping brake vans and stuff for the rides um, also I've had these lying around for a while, came with um, magazine, rally model magazines over the years. I might not be able to use the platform shelter because it would be too big but we'll see. I've also got this little uh, coal hut, yard office. Um, 
going to scale model scenery now because I've got some bits for the engine shed from there. I've also purchased this, so that'll probably be used for our little a little platform for the brake van rides. And uh, I've also got some engine shed doors for this kit. So I'll just show you one that I've quickly knocked up. Again, probably took me about 10 minutes. Rocket car glue. Nice and easy to put together. Simple, which is what I like. Um, so, yeah, I'm just sort of doing the engine shed as I go along. A good reference point if you're ever building a shed like this is um, the Stainmore Railway Facebook page. They literally had a step-by-step -step build of their loco shed over the last couple of years and it's coming on nicely now so um take a look at their facebook page if you want any ideas or pictures because that's what i use as a rough base i mean i've literally not done anything to scale anything i've just picked up some bits of plastic cut them to size and uh, this is what i've come up with so far so um it might not even be the finished shed it's just something for me to go off and um it's just uh, something to me, for me to work towards. I'm still toying whether to put a little platform here, like it was in Steamport and Southport, or to do the platform down the opposite end of the layout here. Not too sure yet, but we're working on that idea. I still haven't decided whether to put a 009 in yet or not either, so it's still a work in progress. I just fixed the camera. So uh, what I'm going to do now is get the trains running on the layout in fact if i just quickly show you this these are what i'm mainly using on the layout these little hattons and andrew barkley locos as well as the homie packets and these are cracking little locos as you might have noticed i've lost a buffer on this one i don't know what happened to it just one day it just wasn't there didn't see it fall or anything. Looked at all over, everywhere I've been working in the office, in the kitchen where I first made this baseboard in the loft. Can't find it anywhere. So I contacted um, Patterns, not really expecting much, but I did ask if there was any parts or damaged Andrew Barclays that I could um, buy to get the parts off. And this arrived in the post today. And it's uh, signed by Christine Hatton herself. So uh, made up of that, you can't fault that for service, can you? So uh, I'm going to fit that later. And the uh, coronation down here will be as good as new. Another reason why I like this loco on this layout is it uh, used to run on Steamtown Carnforth, which was a, a bigger setup to the Steamport Museum. Uh, sadly, again, not a museum anymore, but it still uh, restores locos and maintains them. So, um, yeah, I'm going to... Do a little running session and uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, keeping out for the next update.